Hello, I'm Adam David Long, and welcome to another episode of the LawSnap.com Legal Innovation Update. Today we're going to be talking about the trillion dollar insurance industry and why it's crucial that the industry continue to explore and embrace and harness smart contracts as a way to cut costs, increase profits, and develop whole new ways for people to manage risk. We're also going to be talking about a few early stage projects embracing smart contracts to do just that in the field of crop insurance. Now, insurance contracts are tricky. We talked previously about how one of the crucial issues for any contract is each side needs to worry about whether the other is going to hold up its end of the bargain, whether it's going to do what it promised to do. This is particularly tricky and complex in the insurance context for a few reasons. First of all, Part of what's going on with insurance, if you think about it, is you're buying a product that you hope you're never going to have to use. So this is in contrast, for example, with another type of contract we talked about in another episode where somebody was buying an electric guitar. Well, in that case, if you enter into a contract to purchase an electric guitar, well, first of all, you are hoping to use it, but second of all, you can verify whether the other side performed or not. Not so simple with insurance. You might pay insurance premiums for 20 years and never have to submit a claim. In fact, you hope you're never going to have to submit a claim. So there's not as much moment-to-moment -moment verification of what at least the insurance carrier is doing. Obviously, on the insurance carrier side, they do get verification of whether the, the payments are coming in. And one of the other fundamental issues is there's kind of a conflict of interest that is essential and it's sort of the essence of insurance where somebody is claiming that they had some kind of loss that's covered by the insurance policy. But of course, under most circumstances, at least under traditional insurance, the insurance carrier can't just take that for granted. So if we have, say, Frank Fox, who is a farmer, and he has had a loss and he submits a claim to Ingrid Iguana Insurance. Well, Ingrid can't just take his word for it. Among other reasons, fraud is pretty endemic in the insurance world. So, so she has to do something. She's got to verify what happened. There's a lot of steps to that process, but essentially she has to send out Courtney Crow, who is our claims adjuster. And Courtney's job is to come out, look around, and actually verify the loss. This can get to be fairly complicated process. It takes a while, and you can imagine this starts to add a lot of costs and makes the system more cumbersome. Some of these costs are monetary, but they also come in the form of delays. It takes a while. Anybody who's ever submitted an insurance claim knows that it takes a while frequently to get the claim addressed and get the payment made. So one of the questions that we always want to ask ourselves is, could we use software to automate this process and make it work better? But of course, as we've said, in insurance, we have a trust problem. So if Frank Fox, the farmer, gets told, well, we're using software to manage this now, well, the first question he's going to ask is, well, wait, can I trust this software? Well, anytime we're in that situation, we've got a good candidate for using smart contracts. And again, the idea, again, is that the smart contract is a piece of software, but it's not controlled by Frank Fox and it's not controlled by Ingrid Iguana. It's an independent software that is run on an independent network of computers. So let's talk about how that could work in one particular area called crop insurance. Now, crop insurance, as you might imagine, is insurance for farmers. It's not so easy to be a farmer. There's 500 million farmers in the world, and one of many, many challenges that they face is that 
when you're running a farm, your entire year's income can be wiped out in one day. If there's hail or if there's a drought, all kinds of things can totally destroy your entire livelihood. And so, of course, one of the crucial tools for farmers is crop insurance that helps protect them against that loss. Unfortunately, though, for the reasons we've already talked about, crop insurance can get kind of costly. It's sort of cumbersome, especially when you're dealing with all of these claims adjustment process. And so, in fact, in a lot of parts of the world, only 20% of farmers can afford crop insurance. And in, in many parts of Africa, only 3% of farmers can afford it. And so this is a problem because, as we've said, farmers are facing a tremendous amount of risk. And so one of the exciting opportunities for smart contracts here is to take smart contracts and see if we can vastly reduce the cost of providing this insurance to farmers and make that available to a lot more farmers that can't afford it now. So let's talk about how that might work. There are two very interesting projects happening, in fact, right now trying to do this. They're in their early stages, but one of them is happening in Kenya, and that's being offered by a project called Ether Risk. A second project is happening in Cambodia, and that's being offered by a project called Arbol. Now, for reasons we're gonna to get to in a minute, both Etherisk and Arbol are also teaming up with another extremely important project called the Chainlink Project. What the Chainlink Project is doing is making sure that we have reliable and trustworthy data that can be plugged in to these smart contracts that are managing this insurance. So let's talk about how this works in detail. And by the way, we'll put some links in the show notes so you can learn more about all of these projects. So here's how this works. We've talked about how the process right now of handling claims is somewhat cumbersome, takes time, it's costly, because remember, Courtney Crow, the claims adjuster, has to come out and talk to Frank Fox, the farmer, and try to look at what happened, try to look at data, try to examine the, the fields, a lot of complicated and cumbersome steps in that process. And so the question is, can we use software to reduce or eliminate a lot of that? And the idea is, yes, we can, but it's using a different kind of insurance that's been around for a few decades. It's called parametric insurance. And with parametric insurance, we eliminate a lot of this claims adjustment process. And what we do instead is say that the insurance is triggered by a parameter. So in this case, what we might talk about is the parameter would be the amount of rainfall in a particular area. So if the rainfall is below a certain amount, that triggers a payment. We plug that into a formula to calculate exactly what that payment is, and that's it. It's, there's more to it than that, but to oversimplify, basically we're done, and the payment can go out. Now, one thing to keep in mind, though, is this system isn't perfect, no system is perfect, and part of the issue is that in the case of parametric insurance, it may very well be that the amount calculated under the formula does not directly conform to the actual amount of loss. So Frank, the farmer, may be next door to another farmer. They both may have the same limited rainfall in a given year, but for whatever reason, one of them may have better drainage, may have better groundwater, may be using better irrigation. One of them may have a big loss. The other one right next door may not have so big a loss. And so one of the issues to think about with this type of insurance is they might both get exactly the same payout, even though their losses are different. Now, while this is an issue, overall, many people think it is well worth dealing with that trade-off because, of course, it makes the whole process much simpler. And again, what happens is we've got a smart contract. It is obtaining data on the amount of rainfall that was in a, in a given region and then automatically handling the payout to Frank. So he gets paid faster and the whole process is less cumbersome. There's more certainty to it. There's less uncertainty that happens from the subjectivity and Courtney Crow's opinions about 
how much loss he actually suffered. So it's, it's overall much better for all concerned. Now, one of the issues, though, we do want to mention briefly is I mentioned this data and this rainfall data. That's actually not trivial to make sure that that data is available. And we're going to talk in later episodes about how the chain link project is a very crucial part of this process. So what's exciting about this is still early days with these projects, but they seem to open up tremendous possibilities for cutting costs, for increasing profits for those who provide the insurance, and then also opening up whole new possibilities and, and making this crucially important tool available to lots of people that can't afford it now. Thanks for joining us for this edition of the LostNap.com Legal Innovation Update. If you've enjoyed this video, I hope you'll share it with friends and colleagues. If you could press the like button, that's always appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel. Feel free to follow us on Twitter at LostNap. You can also sign up for our mailing list to get updates. That's at LostNap.com. Until next time, please stay innovating.